Peace, peace. This is Nigga Keep It Real coming to you live once again. In today's video, I'm going to free your mind from the concept of the devil and you burning in hell. I'm going to show you where all that stuff comes from. It's time to put the bullshit kitty stories to bed. Now I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm the one that's going to do it. We're going to come back from this book right here, The Africans Who Wrote the Bible. I'm going to come from this book right here. Revelation of the, of the Devil by Lawrence Gardner. Okay? Before we do that, I'm going to play a clip for you for, from uh, Chris Rock and Eddie Griffin. I hope you two don't strike me. But listen to the message. Then we got some people on even pork. What the fuck is that shit about? You don't even pork. You don't need pop. Some people don't need pop for religious reasons, which I think is dumb. I ain't shitting on nobody's religion. But I refuse to believe that on Judgment Day, my diet's going to come into question. Okay? about goddamn man. Shit ain't gonna fly here. I've already broke the God. I already tore the whole God concept down. Right? Now I'm about to tell the devil. Now I'm about to tell the devil ass down. So if you ain't got God, you ain't got the devil. What you got? You ain't got nothing to believe in now. What you got? Shit. You ain't got nothing but yourself. Believe in your goddamn self. Now, let's read it again. Keep. Keep the church, keep the Catholic Church in mind, because they're going to they gonna play a major role in this book right here, Revelation of the Devil. Okay? Let's read it again. Christianity has just entered its third millennium on, third, on, on Sunday, March 12, 2000. Pope John Paul II, keep that name in mind, used his traditional Sunday Mass to apologize for the sins and atrocities of the church against peoples and culture around the world for the past thousand years. From historical evidence, the sins of the church are numerous. However, the worst lying sin of the church was the premeditated transformation of the racial and ethnic identities of Jesus Christ, his mother, and the entire people of the Bible, from the black from the black people they were to white people, to satisfying emerging European racist sentiments against black people. Hold on, one second. I'm digging y'all ass today. It goes on to say that. 
made it possible for Christian Europe to receive black people who created the concepts, doctrines, and sacramental practices that eventually became the foundation of Christianity as the cursed ones by the very God black people imagined, created, and personified. See that? Black people came up with the concept of an idea of God. God is it's imaginary, it's not real. So since we know that black people came up with the concept of God, they, they came up with the concept of heaven, they came up with the concept of death and hell and angels and demons, right? Let's get into the devil. Let's tear the, let's tear the devil ass down. Let's tear his ass up. I'm going to show you where this concept, where this, where this shit come from. This Bachman shit. The Bachman, right? That's what we want. Bach. Uh, man. Okay, so you want we want the Bachman character, right? That's what we want. Okay, I'm about to tell y'all ass up today. All that hair fire, all that hell fire and, and devil horn, and you get you get possessed by demons. That's bullshit. Dig into this character right here. This is what everybody's afraid of. They said it's the devil. Right? They said it's the devil. The Bachman. This. People are afraid of this character. Right? I'm going to show you who came up with the horns. Right? Who came up with these horns? Who came up with the, with the star? Okay? With the moon? Right? Somebody made this up. Dig into it. Let's go. Revelation of the Devil. Let's read the back of this. So this guy, Lawrence Gardner, this guy, he passed away in 2001. Okay? And he was a master mason. So he's a master mason and he's coming out revealing what the masons do. Okay? He said he's a he's also a master mason. He was a master mason. Now, let's read this. Lawrence Gardner, always calm and professional, was nevertheless a passionate, convincing advocate of the of his controversial theories. He was prolific, producing a book a year from 2001 until his ill ill I mean until his ill health forced him to slow down. He range of highly acclaimed and vicious books. I mean, his range of highly acclaimed and ambitious books based on wide reading and a, and a deep knowledge of a range of subjects. Cumulated in this, his final book, the accompanying book to his book, The Origin of God, written shortly before his death in 2010, it is an irrefutable and searing indictment of conventional belief, which exposes the evils and absurdities perpetuated over the, over the millennia in the name of Christianity. Okay? Revelation of the Devil traces the history of the devil from its roots in Mesopotamia and the Old Testament all the way up into the modern world today. Traveling through the New Testament, the Quran, the Inquisitions, the, Re the Reformation and the Enlightenment it unmasks, it unmasks the myth, the myth of evil and the conspiracy of Satan. Okay? We're not done yet. We're doing deep surges, deep surges today. Deep surgery. We're going to get this spear out your ass today. So let's answer that. Revelation of the Devil follows the devil's sinister history and the manner of a biography from his scriptural, scriptural introduction to the dark satanic cults of the present day. In a strict chronological, 
In a strict chronological progression, we experience the mood of each successive era and witness the constant manipulation of the devil's image as it suited the changing requirements of his promoters in their bid for threat-driven clerical control. For nearly 2,000 years, a supernatural a supernatural, uh, and a supernatural entity known as the devil has been held responsible by church authorities for bringing sin and wickedness into the world. One second. One second. It says that throughout this period, the devil has been trained as a constant protagonist of evil, although his origin remains a mystery and his personality has undergone many interpretive changes. Revelation of the devil seeks to examine his, this process of figurative development in detail. Following the devil's sinister history in the manner of a bio, biography, from his scriptural introduction to the dark satanic cults of the present day, from a perspective of mainstream reasoning, it is difficult to comprehend the nature of such superstitious thoughts in today's world. But whilst a widespread belief in God persists, it is a it is but a short step to accepting the devil as a personification of evil. Thus, numerous questions are raised. If God is all good and all powerful, then why does evil exist and how can it how can it exist? If God created everything, then where did the devil come from? If the devil exists, then why does he not feature in any pre-Christian document? Who or what were the devils? Were they an invented product of Christian theology, or was there an uh, or was or was their origin in the in the demonology of earlier times? Okay. Let's read this. Okay? Alright, check this out. In the Gospel of Matthew, the opening book of Christian New Testament, a figure known as the devil, is introduced as the tempter of Jesus. At a series of locations, the wilderness, a temple, and a mountain, the devil is said to have provoked Jesus with taunts and miracles, about miracles. Ultimately, promising the kingdoms of the world and returning for Jesus' allegiance. The offer was, of course, declined, and that is the end of the story. A mere 246 words and just 11 verses? No description of the devil is given, nor any hint as to his origin or identity. So when Jesus talked to the devil, who the hell was he talking to? A damn monkey? A reptile? A talking horse? A spaghetti monster? What What the hell was it? A talking gym shoe? It says here, apart from a repeat of the exact same story in the Gospel of Luke, it is the one and only personal appearance of the devil in the whole Bible. He received no reference in the Old Testament, has a few passing mentions in the New Testament, and the final book of Revelation claims that during an envision war of the angels, the devil was chained in a bottomless pit for, for a thousand years. The pit is described as being of everlasting fire, but even though confined to the blazing abyss, the devil is still referred to as the prince of the world. Okay, and it goes on to, it says, it says, that is the extent of the devil's portrayal in the Bible. An undefined character, whose name derives from the Anglo-Saxon word, the airball, or the devil, relating to a nuances, a nuances, Beyond this particularly, particularly English definition, other languages uses, use variants of the original Greek Diablos uh, and accuser. Now let's go over here to this. Let's read this. Now check this out. We're going to drop down here. It says that this Lateran Palace decree was reckoned to exonerate God from the devil's action. But it is, but it also had the effect of rendering God ineffectual against such an all-powerful enemy. Thus, it was that 
although much had been made of the devil and his wiles to that point in time, his cult soared to previously unparalleled heights from, third, from, the, from the 13th century. What hope was there for everyday people when even God was powerless against him? Even to this day, the Church of Rome claims tenuously to a middle age beliefs in the devil. In 1993, the Catechism of the Catholic Church was pronounced by Pope John Paul II and later translated as a compendium in English as recently as 2005. The pen ultimate and consolidating item of the compendium of the Catechism states, evil indicates the person of Satan who opposes God and is the deceiver of the whole world. Victory over the devil has already been won by Christ. We pray, however, that the human family be free from Satan and his works. We also ask for the precious and for the precious gift of peace and the grace of perseverance as we wait for the coming of Christ, who will free us definitely from the evil one. Now listen to this. Given the dearth of related information in the Bible, it is clear that the devil of common perception is by, is by no means a scriptural interpretation. Almost everything written and taught about the devil and the way he has come to be understood is a product of, Christ, of, of church doctrine and has absolutely no biblical authenticity. authenticity. His character was developed onwards from the 4th century in an attempt to, the, to provide a base for the doctrine of salvation. And an, uh, uh, a figure of threat and evil from whose from whom those obedient to the church could be saved. A foremost requirement in this regard was the ritual of baptism, which bound its candidates to the faith. To make baptism, baptism effective, the 4th century notion of original sin was introduced, a doctrine which prevails to this day. In this respect, the unnamed Old Testament serpent of Genesis, who seduced Eve in the Garden of Eden, was said by the Church of Rome to have been Satan. Thus, it was, it was determined that owing the transgression of Eve, all people are born in sin by virtue of having mothers. Consequently, a church, a child at the font was, and still is, preserved, presumed simple by the very nature of his birth. Uh, so we're going to drop down here. Now listen to this. It says that from this strategic beginning, the devil was associated thereafter with all forms of sin in the eyes of the church. Then, in the late 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great announced, the devil has power to control the weather. Henceforth, storms and tempests, tempests were, the, were believed to be inflicted by Satan. At that time, in 590 A.D., Gregory also gave the first satanic description proclaiming that Satan has horns and hooves and a terrible stench. You see that? So this right here, this Baphomet with the horns, this bullshit. This is bullshit. Man came with this garbage. I'll give you the sources. You get this shit out your head. Gradually, as the centuries passed, an ever-growing lust of evil was piled upon the devil's head. He became responsible for every tragedy, whether natural or deliberate, from earthquakes to mortal crime. Crime. To mortal crime, right? God appeared to have no direct control over the evil one. Only the church had the power to intervene, and the price for protection was also... And the price for protection was was absolute subservience. What does subservience mean? Subservience. Sub. Sir. Subservient. Subservient means prepared to obey others unquestionably. That means you can't question the church. You can't question them. You can't question the church. That's what it says. Subservient. Let's keep on going. Those who did not comply with the rule of the bishops were declared sorcerers, witches, and otherwise devil worshippers. From the Middle Ages, hundreds of thousands were mercilessly tortured, 
hanged or buried at the, at the stake through a period of more than 500 years. You see that? Let's keep on going. Even after such, such persecution and execution were ruled illegal by the European secular courts from the latter 1600s, it was still maintained that the devil and his demons were the greatest of all threats to social order. Both the Catholic and Protestant movements continued their war against satanic influence by lucrative performance, performance of exorcisms, a practice which remains extant today. Father Gabriel Amon, a senior exorcist for the Vatican City, reported recently that he had performed over 550,000 exorcisms. Additionally, he made headlines across the globe with his satanic opinion of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter's Children book series. The Catholic News reported on January 4, 2002, that Amorov stated in an interview, quote, behind Harry Potter hides the signature of the king of darkness, the devil. Just as in medieval times, the devil-based superstition remains an aspect of Christian religious belief. Although not so widespread in past centuries, this belief is still used to great effect by fire and brimstone. Preachers who seek to manipulate their congregation by means of threat and fear of the diabolical unknown. At the other end of the scale, the devil has become a tactical marketing ploy for advertisers, for, for advertisers who use him to, to convey images of pleasure and abandon to a more adventurous, though no less gullible public. Thus his, temptations, thus, his temptations are promoted as the route to excess of personal gratification in a modern environment that is completely divorced from any religious context. Listen to this. Of all the mythologies, of all, of all the mythological characters ever imagined, there is no doubt that the devil has had a greater influence on social behavior than any other for the past two millennia or two thousand years. Indeed, he has had a greater influence than most real figures of history. As related by Fyodor Dovetsky character, Ivan, and the brothers Karamazova, quote, the devil does not exist, but man has created him in his own image and likeness. The story of this creation and its strategized evolution through the centuries is, nevertheless, as fascinating as any true life biography. Not with, now, notwithstanding the devil's erroneously presumed involvement in modern day calamities, events of nature and terrorism, m millions of innocent people have been tortured and executed specifically because they were reckoned to be the apostles of Satan. The absurdities of this charge was that it was leveled by the very church establishment that invented the devil in the first place. So if you believe in the devil, you go to church for no goddamn reason. You got man has manipulated the minds of the masses and got you believing in a spooky ass God that doesn't exist and a spooky ass devil that does not exist. Facts. Let's go to the Baphomet. Baphomet, see chapter 18. Here's this, right? As the boils below, this bullshit the popular representation of the devil from the late 18th century. So we're going to go here to the Baphomet. Right? Let's go. Let's get it. You got the Baphomet. Okay? And what page is that? You got the Baphomet page... One second. Page 262. The Goat Mendes, right? The Goat Mendes. The Goat of Mendes. Although the compendium mal idea of the devil as a goat-like figure had moved into some obscurity apart from his satanic mass representations, the image returned almost by default during the latter 19th century. From the middle 1800s, the French occultist Alfonso Louis Constant, who assumed the name Eliphas Levy, wrote a number of works concerning transcendental magic. 
the best known of this composition is entitled Dog May El uh, Ritual De La Hate Magic. In this book, Levy introduced the picture of a goat like image, which he identified as Baphomet, a mysterious name sourced by Levy from Inquisition trans transcriptions of the Ninth Templar trials in the 14th century. Creatively inspired as a composite figure, based on a variety of occult traditions and alchem alchemical doctrines, Levy considered his Baphomet to be the ultimate symbolic, symbolic depiction of, her of a hermetic absolute. Describing the figure's design and complexity in detail, Levy wrote, the goat carries the sign of the pentagram on the forehead, right here. He's talking about this. I'm giving you the details, the, the, the layout. Here's the pentagram on the forehead, right? And it says here that with one point at top, a symbol of light, his two hands forming the sign of, the, of hermeticism. The one point pointing up to the white moon, they call it Mercury. The other pointing down to the black one, they call it severity. Right? Okay? Right there. As I'm reading, as I get, as you see the description, I'm reading it to you. This sign expresses the, per the perfect harmony of mercy with justice. His one arm is his one arm is female. The other male like one is the uh, Algernon, the art of hand mobility, hand stands. The attributes of which we had to unite with those of our goat because he is one and the same symbol. The flame of intelligence shining between his horn is the magic light of the universal balance, the image of the soul elevated above matter, as the flame, whilst being tied to the mat to matter, shines above it. The beast's head represents the horror of the sinner, whose material, who, um, who, who materially acting solely responsible, part has to bear the punishment exclusively, because the soul is insensitive according to its nature and can only suffer when it, it materializes. The rod standing between the rod standing instead of genitals symbolizes eternal life. The body covered with scales is the water. The semicircle above it, the atmosphere. The feathers falling above the volatile. Humanity is represented by the two breasts and the Algernon arms of this sphinx of the occult sciences. I just broke it down. This this is made up by men. Your hell fire? Bullshit. Angels and demons? Bullshit. Let's keep on going. Listen to this. The design of this Bachman goat was based on a newly applied format of the Egyptian goat of Mendes. It was meant to be entirely magical, but not in any way sinister. And certainly not the devil. However, since the sabbatical goat of the witches had been deemed satanic, Levy's uh, enigmatic goat was well suited to, bi to diabolical portrayal. It has res uh, resultantly become one of the most used of all popular depictions of the devil. As in the opening sequence of the 1969 Dennis Whitley movie, The Devil Rides Out. The devil rides out. Just broke down the devil. Just broke his ass down that quick. That quick. That quick. This bullshit. Hellfire bullshit. It's all imaginary. Just broke it down. Don't quote no goddamn Bible versions. That's not gonna help your ass. Get the hell out with that shit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Don't get mad at me. I just, I just, I just tore your whole belief system down. Just tore it down. God is imaginary. The devil is imaginary. Hell is imaginary. It's all bullshit. Don't come in with that bullshit. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. With your, um, with your Bram Stoker's Dracula, with Dracula, the vampires, bullshit. That's all bullshit. So you got Order of the Vampire. I wrote down Dracula debunk, Origin of the Origin of Vampire, right? The author Bram Stoker, 1847 to 1912, was born in Ireland and attended Trinity College, Dublin, where he became president of the Philosophical Society and auditor of the Historical Society. 
In 1870, he graduated with honors in science and after some time as a journalist, became the manager of Sir Henry Irving's Lyceum Theater in London in 1878. This was, this was primarily, primarily a Shakespearean establishment, but it was here that in the days before Irving and Stoker, James R. Platt's play, The Vampire, had been staged in 1820, at which time the theater was called the English Opera House. See that? Immediately prior to the publication of Stoker's Dracula on May 26, 1879, 1897, the author led a four-hour dramatized reading from his book, The Lyceum. You see that? You see that? Just debunked your, just debunked your, your, Bram, your Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bullshit. Bullshit. Hell fire. Bullshit. It's no such thing as hell fire. It's all imagination. It's not real. They they pimping your ass. They pimping your ass. You just got pimped. You just got pimped. So for those of you in these churches, those of you who are part of these Hebrew in like camps, those of you who are preaching this from this goddamn Bible, manipulating people until they're going to go to hell, if they don't do all this shit and keep these commandments, you a, you a fucking liar. You a goddamn liar. You a lie. All this, all this stuff is bullshit. It's control. Mind manipulation, you just been mind fucked. Point blank period. It's all bullshit. Bullshit. Just gave you the sources. Debunk that. Don't come with no goddamn Bible verses. I just debunked this shit. I showed, I gave the source where it come from. So where they get this stuff from? Devil, the hell. Where they get the devil from? The hell. Angels, the demons, the fire, all that shit. They got it from black people's imagination. Let's read it again. How you gonna debunk this shit? Your devil has been, just been demolished. Let's read it again. So you got the order of angels and the hierarchy of, of, of God. You got the creation of religion, the concept of God in ancient Egypt. I just read it. The Jew, the Peter Eckler Jew man said, an imaginative race of superstitious black men invented the concept of God. Peter Eckler points out a group of ancient imaginative and superstitious people created a system of religious that still mystifies the greatest religious minds of the civilized world today. Guess who these ancient imaginative and superstitious people were? They were black people. I don't give a shit if they from West. I don't give a shit if you can name all these damn tribes. They could be the Ashanti, the Edward, the Igbo, the Yoruba, the, 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 uh, the, Man the Mandingo. All these black people have all these different gods that's in Africa. And they are all nothing but beliefs. Superstition. The shit ain't real. It says that his people are the... Uh, his people are that... Have claimed before Europeans... That they created the concept of religion and godliness... For over 2,000 years. However, he knew better. This quotation is like... This quotation is therefore like a confession. As he wonders how such a great invention... Could have come to black people, a race of superstitious but it, but imaginative people. However, it was because that black. However, it was because black people were superstitious and imaginative that they invented the concept of religion and godliness. That's why you believe in heaven, hell, angels, and demons, and this and this fucking right here, because of the human brain, imagination. Wake the fuck up, God damn. Don't quote no shit like, oh, Peter said this. If you don't do this, you don't go to hell. Get the fuck out of here. Stop lying to these people, man. Stop lying. You fucking liars. You camps. You preachers and teachers. Origin of the concept of death, heaven, and hell. It's imagination. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Like I said, if you want to come to my, if you want to come on my channel and learn some truth for free, come on. I'm not finna. I don't want your money. What good is your money going to do? Not a goddamn thing. 
The money gonna do shit. Just broken down that fast. Concept of God, devils, and angels and demons. It's all a belief, man. It's bullshit. It's not real. You should not have to open up a goddamn book for demons to appear. You should not have to open up a book for God to appear. If they all powerful, ask they ask to pop up. And if they don't pop up, it's a problem. That means they're not real. The shit is fake. Fear. The acronym for fear is false evidence appearing to be real. So this character right here, this Baphomet, is bullshit. It's imaginary. It's false. This is this has you in fear. So this is false evidence appearing to be real. You have God. Whether God be black, white, brown, green, blue, I don't give a shit. It's false evidence appearing to be real. Wake the fuck up. God damn. You niggas want to believe in something so goddamn bad, you be willing to kill for it. You assholes. Now you going to debunk this shit. Don't call no goddamn Bible verses. That's not going to help your ass. That's man doing this shit. Okay? That's facts. This, get this shit out your head. I just broke this shit down. Where it comes from, what all this stuff means. And you got camps on there saying, oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. They're lying to you. They're not going to tell you the truth. And whoever else is performing this that that bullshit, devil, spooky ass bullshit. Okay? Wake up. Who's ever using the Bible to put you in fear and you are believing that shit, you are you a fool. You a fool. You're not questioning your belief. So you deserve to get your you deserve to get pimped. You deserve to get get, get your money taken from you. Don't get mad at me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to free your mind. We can go through all these camps. I can go through all these people who, 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 who you are subscribed to that's preaching this bullshit. You got Truth Unveiled 777. I'm going to put his ass on blast. You got this nigga talking this shit about some, some goddamn uh, uh, prophecy, 400, 400 year prophecy. Bullshit. It's garbage. You got this. You got, you got uh, who else? You got G. That's a prophet. This nigga taking y'all money. He taking y'all money. Who else? Who else you got? Come on with it. You got GMS. These assholes. GMS. These niggas. Preaching that bullshit. GMS. These niggas. False phony ass niggas. You got these niggas. GOCC. False phony ass niggas. Preaching this bullshit. False. You got these niggas. ICBK. ICBK. These niggas, false, phony ass niggas, preaching that bullshit. Who else you got? You got Seed of Israel. Seed of Israel. I don't know these people. I'm just calling them out. Teaching this bullshit. These niggas. This nigga is, is selling, he's selling stuff. He's selling shit. Pause this shit. This nigga's selling hoodies and shit. Let's see. Let's see. Question I came across it. Selling hoodies and shit. You know who you subscribe to? You got uh uh who else? Let me click on my on my channel. Who some subscribe to? You got Rap the News. So you got rap rap the news, right? All these niggas are false. They're lying to you. They know what they're doing. Rap the news, right? You got these. You got this nigga, and he's and he's selling shit. He's selling hoodies and shit, right? Support. You got a you got a page set up. Support. Donate. Right. Let's click on his videos. Let's see what he got. 
Click on his stuff. He's, sell, he's selling hoodies and stuff. I, I've, quite, I've saw it. i seen it on here. Get your hoodies and all that shit. Everybody got. Everybody has money in mind. They, they, they pimping you, man. They pimping your ass. Who else you got? You got this nigga. This nigga selling books. He's selling books. Here's his website. Kayashua.com. Look how much he's selling this shit for. Watch. Let's see. Let's go in this, let's go in this store. Tides, collecting tithes and offerings. Taking money. Right? Putting all you niggas on blast. I don't give a shit. You talking about you for the people. You ain't for no goddamn people. You for yourself. You taking these niggas money. That's what the fuck you doing. Where's it at? Let's see. What you got? These niggas selling books. Let's see. Where's that shit at? All this, it's all, it's all bullshit, man. It's a scam. They scamming and pimping your ass. This nigga got, we got selling books like hundred fifty dollars and shit like that. He sell, he's, he's selling this shit. Let's see. All this shit online, you can read for free. All of it. It ain't nothing but nothing but books written by fucking men. So you are put in fear as if if you don't celebrate a, a, fa- a pass or a feast day, your ass going to hell. The most I can come back and smoke your ass and fire. Get the fuck out of here, man. It's bullshit. It's a goddamn lie. I just, I just, I just shot the whole God concept and devil concept down. So what do you got? Who, who are you giving allegiance to? Who are you serving? Fucking man. Another man. Wake the fuck up. That's why I'm the atheist. I'm the God killer. I'm going to destroy all that shit. I'm going to wake your ass the hell up. How the hell are you going to fear another man? He tells you you're going to go to hell because you don't do what this fucking book say. And his ass has never been there. Get the fuck out of here, man. Everybody got money in their in mind. Selling stuff. These niggas, watch me report. I done blasted they ass. I done blasted they ass. They selling DVDs and shit for $100 a pop. And selling uh, chains and necklaces and shit for $30 to $40, 50 Call these niggas out. Don't be afraid. Shit. Everybody got a GoFundMe page set up. Donate. Taking your money. Because they know they, you dumb niggas ain't going to really pick up a fucking book and read it. But you want to come on my channel and talk shit about me and quote fucking Bible passages and you don't want to know who wrote the fucking book. So you got here, you got here, if you want to learn about who your prophets of the Bible are, if you want to learn about your prophets, right, and you come on here and you quote me, you quote me prop with these, with the, this prophet said this and this prophet said that, well guess what? I'm going to show you the origin of your prophets, where, he, where, your prophets, where you can go and talk to your prophets today. Where these niggas come from. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's time to turn up today, boy. You should be pissed off. These niggas taking your fucking money. And you're giving it to them like a, like a dumbass. So you got here. Right here. Captain Charles Rattry studied the similarity between the Akan and Christian religion. Religious thoughts, concepts, and practices. He also studied Akan Proverbs. This was not a minor study because it earned him an honorary doctorate degree at Oxford University. It would, not, it, would not have, it would not have brought him such an honor if the findings were trivial and false. Bradshaw concluded that the Akan, uh, the Akan named Nayami God in West Africa was the same name as the Hebrew God Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahweh. You see that? They're lying to you. They're lying to you. These people know what the fuck they're doing. They're taking your money. Because you want to believe in any goddamn thing instead of believing in your fucking self. You niggas are, are gullible and dumb, man. Dumb. Oh the, oh, the most high said this. 
Oh, in the book of Leviticus, it says this. Oh, in the book of Proverbs, it said this. You don't know who even wrote that fucking, that fucking verse. Goddamn shame, man. A damn shame. I'm giving you sources and, and proof and evidence. How are you going to debunk this? You ain't, got, you ain't got shit to come back with some fucking Bible verses? Get the fuck out of here. Get the hell out of here with that shit, man. It is not ironic and made and it major evidence of European of Christian Europe's ignorance that in Europe, Christianity pronounces African religion as pagan religion and in Africa. Scholars that have studied the African religious concept, doctrines, and languages, language proclaim that the foundation of Christian religion concept and doctrines originated from African religions. In his work, Captain Rattray also confirmed that the Akan God was the same as a Christian God that was introduced to Europeans by the Jewish people that were that went to you and become the Hebrews and all that shit. Right? And it says that it says that let's see here. Um Yeah, I, I done told this shit up. I'm too busy trying to, I'm too busy tearing the Bible down. I'm too busy tearing it down. So you got this man here saying that he's giving you the people who came up to a Proverbs. He's giving you, he's giving you a prophets, your prophets of the Bible. So if you want to talk about Isaiah, Malachi, Zechariah, go to West Africa and talk to your kind people. Because that's the people who wrote this shit. But here comes the white man plagiarizing, taking from the ancient Egyptians, black folks, and we practicing that shit and saying, hey, this is the right way. Bullshit. In fact, Proverbs have been such an ordinary part of the everyday language of the Akan people that not many indigenous Akan scholars thought much about them until European missionaries and scholars came to live among the Akan in West Africa, saw Akan Proverbs as the true and original source of the biblical proverbs. How are you going to debunk that? How? How are you going to debunk that, man? You can't. You can't. I can take you to Africa right now. Well, I can't go there. I don't have the funds to do it. But if you got money, go to fucking Africa and go to my the Akan people. Read them passages and, and proverbs and, and, and psalms and all that shit. And they're going to say, hey, we wrote that shit. That's our stuff. It says to that. As a result, the earliest and most notable collection of, of Akan Proverbs in print were by Reverend Ritz, Reverend Chris Stoller, and Captain Charles Rattray. All Europeans who, who knew the importance of their discovery of the Akan Proverbs and their relationship to the biblical Proverbs. What makes these findings and revelations among the Akan people of West Africa more fascinating is the fact that Reverend Ritz and Reverend Chris Stoller were all ordained missionary were all ordained ministers of the Presbyterian faith of the Presbyterian faith. They had learned, they had studied and learned to believe the Bible, and that gave a lot of credibility to what they found among the Akan in West Africa. In the Bible, we have been told that King Israelite David wrote the biblical Proverbs. Not only do we find here that David did not create the Proverbs as Jewish scholars of the biblical doctrines claim, but also we find the people whose daily sayings, admonitions, documents, claim, I mean, uh, whose daily sayings, admonitions, philosophies, concepts, and morality were the Proverbs in the Bible. Western scholars that have studied ancient Egypt have also found that the biblical Proverbs originated from ancient Egyptian literature. In the wisdom of ancient Egypt, Joseph Castor wrote, the more important of the wisdom books and the longest is Aminope. Aminope. It has often been compared to the biblical Proverbs with which it has many points of contact both in thought and in actual phraseology. In reading Aminope, even the reader who has but a nodding acquaintance with Proverbs would note the remarkable similarity in phrasing to Proverbs 22 1724. Another point 
At another important point of similarity is the religious tone and attitude which permeates Amimope. These are scholars saying this stuff, man. These are white Jewish scholars admitting that they took ancient Egyptian black people's imagination, thoughts, and concepts and repackaged that shit and got the whole world thinking you're going to go to hell and some guy in the sky looking down at your ass recording everything you say and do. Bullshit. They lying to you. You've been lying. Your ass been pimped. And you deserve to keep on getting pimped. You deserve to keep on getting pimped. Because you don't give a shit about the truth. You don't want to learn the truth. You want to be a, a lead. You want to be a follower. You want you want to be a, a follower instead of a leader. And you a goddamn fool. I should write a book. I can write a Bible and put my name in that shit. I could be charging you niggas by the droves. Because you believe in any goddamn thing. And you don't do your own goddamn research. And come to your own conclusions. And say, hey, man, could it be possible that the whole time all this shit is, bu- is bullshit? And that's what it is. It's all bullshit. With that being said, peace.